Hi, so I know most of you are at school, um, maybe I caught you on lunch, but I wanted to just hop on real quick because, while I had a few seconds free and talk to you guys for a minute because um, there's just something I feel like I have to say. And this was prompted by a conversation that was happening the past few, yesterday and today, in our Facebook group. So I hope, um, if you can't catch this live, that you're able to come back and check it out later and just leave a comment and say hi. Um, if you are able to, to let, us, let me know that you're able to see it. So anyhow, the conversation that happened in our Facebook group was a really interesting question, but it prompted a discussion with a lot of great comments but some concerning ones too and it was just reminding me this is not the only time I've seen these concerns I think there's a lot of confusion amongst Christians um, and Christian teachers about some of these things and so I, I like I said I just I feel like I have to say something and try to clear up some of these some of these disagreements, concerns, whatever you want to call them. So here is the question that was originally asked. It was actually a really good question. A teacher said, um, I had a Muslim student that came into my class and asked if she could use my room. I, I think no students were there. It was just her and the, and the student. And I said, of course. And I didn't realize this, but I looked back and, and she was actually like, bow, you know, bowing down and praying, um, you know, praying because that's what she was supposed to do. And I was like, oh, just it, it didn't bother me. It just took, took me by surprise. And so I'm wondering, you know, what should I do? You know, I just, I, I, I just want to, I want her to know that I'm a Christian. I'm not sure, quite sure what to say and or how to handle this. And and most of the advice was great. And I think the overwhelming answer uh, to the question was, of course, like let her use your room, show love to her in that way, and you can hopefully, you know, maybe you can even ask her a little bit about her faith and have an opportunity to open doors of conversation, um, which which was great. But as we were just having, you know, conversation in the comments, there were some really, um, there was a lot of different comments and a, some concerning comments, and some of the ones that really concerned me. And like I said, this is not isolated to this conversation. These these types of comments I see all the time amongst Christians and that is things like well we need to tolerate all religions and um, you know she, her belief is just as valid as our belief and um, you know what would you want you know just things like this basically you know it's, it's, it's the same God so it doesn't matter and here's the thing there's like pieces of truth in all those statements but I'm just con really concerned about a few things and so I'm just gonna share three three things here we're gonna start with like a big truth and then we're gonna talk about like tolerance and what that means and then we're gonna like really narrow it down and talk about what that means for us as Christian teachers okay so I'll try to make this quick big truth what is you know what is tolerance what does that mean and then what do we do with this so um, first big truth there is only one way to God and that is Jesus that's it there is only one way to God and if you consider yourself a Christian and you don't believe that I challenge you to read the Bible I challenge you to really consider these things um, read the Bible for yourself listen to to messages and preaching I'd recommend truth for life um, you can google that I'll try to leave a link later and really consider this because listen here's the truth the Bible says um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Um, the book of 1 John says over and over, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. And so there is only one way to God. The Bible is crystal clear about that. And we need to know that for ourselves. But we also like cannot lose sight of that truth. Our society is very pluralistic meaning they want they are we're constantly being told that all ways to God are equally valid that your truth is good for you and my truth is good for me and like we can all have our own truths but that's not what the God of the Bible teaches that is not what is true there are not many truths there is one truth there is one way there is only one way to God and that is through Jesus so 
we can't ever lose sight of that. We have to know that. We have to believe that. And like I said, if you don't believe that, I challenge you to read the Bible for yourself and consider these things for yourself. Consider if there really can be, if all of these really can be equally valid. And consider that if you're just depending on like the way you were raised or what you feel or what you think, where is the surety in that? How do you know that you're right? So there's that. Before I move on to tolerance, let me just be really clear here about what the gospel is, what the Bible says about how to get to God, okay? So the Bible says, the gospel is that God created us in his image, good and perfect, but that Adam and Eve in their sin, when they disobeyed God, they brought sin on us all. So now we are not born good. We are born in God's image, but we are each born with a sin nature. And because of that sin, in other words, we by nature don't want to have anything to do with God. We want to rebel against God. Uh, we don't want to come to him his way. Uh, we want to do our own thing. So that's our nature. By nature, we're born that way. And because of that, we are separated from God. So our sin, our failure to meet his standards, our, 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 we are separated from God. We cannot be with him. Um, but God had a plan and he sent Jesus, his son, the son of God, to be born of a virgin, to live a sinless life that we never could, and to take our place. He died on the cross in our place to do what we could not do, to reconcile us to God. And in his resurrection proved that he was God, that he accomplished what he came to do, and that he is the only answer. And if, if, you, if God draws us to himself and we respond by faith alone, in his work alone, not in anything that we have done, then he will change our heart, he will renew our lives, and he will reconcile us to God in life and in death. So that is just a very brief summary, but that is the gospel. That is the only way to be reconciled to God. That is the only way to know God. No other way works. Okay, so I just, I, I say that because the word Christian is used so broadly. And even in our Facebook group that's for Christian teachers, I know there are so many different views on this. And I just want to challenge all of us to go to the Bible. The Bible is the only thing we can trust in for sure. Not what you've been told growing up, not what you think, not what you feel, not what I think, not what I feel, but what the Bible says is what is sure. And that says there is one way to God. Okay, so there's only one way to God. That's the broad truth. Tolerance. Tolerance is the buzzword in our society. It is like the most important thing. Um, Everything must be tolerated except intolerance. <laughs> so, should we be tolerant of other religions, other beliefs? Well, that totally depends on what you mean by tolerance. And I found tolerance is like not always defined. It's just thrown out there. So, I'm going to define it two different ways. I'm going to define it in a way that we should do it, in a way that we shouldn't do it. Okay? So, if tolerance means that we love people, that we are there for them, that we go out of our way to help them, that we respect them as people made in God's image, that we respect their right to believe differently than we do. If that is what tolerance is, then we absolutely should do all of those things. We must love people. We must um, we must go out of our way to help them. We must inconvenience ourselves for their sake. We must, like I said, respect that they might think differently. Okay? If that is tolerance, then yes. But if tolerance is believing or implying or outright saying that your way to God is just as valid as the Bible way to God, then we cannot be, then that is not what we are called to do. We, we can't, we'd be lying. Lying for the sake of tolerance? I, I mean, I don't know, right? I mean, you, you, we can't do that. There, like I said, there is only one way to God. So, so I, like I said, when people throw out the word tolerance, I don't know if I should applaud or like yell. I like I, I don't know because I don't, I don't know what they mean. So that that's the difference. Tolerance, if it means love and respect, yes. If it means agree with in all things, 
No. If it means say that their way is just as good as the Bible way, no. Okay, so I know I'm getting a little bit off on a rant here, but I think this is really, really important. And I will just give an example of I think what this looks like. So I have a friend, um, I have a lot of friends, but I have a friend in particular that I talk with a lot and we believe very differently on like about God, about faith, and honestly about like like a lot of things, <laughs> like pretty much every political issue. Like we are on opposite sides, but we are friends. And here's the thing, we know, we know that we disagree on these things. Um, but we can talk about it very respectfully. We have these great conversations and I, I learn so much from them. I hope she's learning from them. And here's the thing, I respect her a lot. I know she is searching for truth and she's very intellectually honest in her search for truth. And I, so I respect her, I respect, um, and I respect her right to believe differently than me, okay? I don't really respect her beliefs. I believe she's dead wrong, but I respect her and I respect her right to disagree and I love that we can talk about those things honestly. I love it. And we're, and we're friends, um, despite and maybe even because of some of these differences. And so that, but, but she knows that I think differently and that I don't think that her way is just as good as, as the Bible way. Um, that I really believe this is the truth. Um, and honestly, I think she believes the same, right? She doesn't think that my, like, she thinks I'm wrong, right? One, we can't both be right, which is impossible, right? They're either God, there either is a God or there isn't, right? Can't both be right. So that's what I'm saying, all right? We can have both. We can love, respect, um, be friends with people, and we should um, without implying to them that what they believe is right, okay? And I'm not saying that we should go up to everyone and like just that lead with, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that we need to, sorry, got a phone call. <laughs> I'm not saying that we should go up to them and necessarily just share this with everybody all the time, right? You've got, you've got to be wise, you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading, it's got to be in the right context, so that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying never lose sight of the truth, okay? And tolerance, yes or no, depends on what you mean by that. Finally, what does this mean for us as Christian teachers? Um, I cannot say exactly what this means in your classroom, okay? There, if you're in a, well, I can say if you're in a Christian school, you proclaim these truths from the rooftop, okay? Loud, proud, <laughs> I have mentioned them 24 seven, you know, obviously you don't can't do it 24 seven, but definitely teach it. But if you're in a public school, you, are in a, you have a lot of restrictions on what you can and can't say on honestly, and maybe even what you should say, all right? So first of all, I would say no, know when it is and isn't appropriate to bring up religious topics. And if you don't know that, we have a training that can help you. It's called Teach with Faith, Not Fear. You could Google it and I'll try to leave a link here when I'm done. Um, we really, uh, it's in partnership with CEAI and um, David Schmoose, the director there, really is knowledgeable and he gives a lot of practical advice on like when as a public school teacher, can you talk about religion and faith? And when can't you? And maybe more importantly, not when, but how. Like, how are you supposed to talk about these things? So you need to know that. You need to know what is and isn't appropriate. But two other things. You also just never lose sight of the fact that there is one way and that your students need Jesus. And whether or not you can ever say anything to them, whether or not you ever mention anything, don't lose sight of that. Don't get sucked into thinking, oh, they're good kids, they're okay, or, um, well, they believe in God, that, that's good at least. Um, just never lose sight of the truth, that they need Jesus. Um, and then finally, just pray for them and depend, and listen to the Holy Spirit, like be sensitive to his prompting, in that, you know, remember that it's, it's God that draws people to himself. If God is at work in their life, drawing them to himself, that's his work, it's not ours. But sometimes he allows us to play a part in that and that is such a privilege so so pray for your students and and be sensitive to his leading you know if there is if you do feel God leading you to say something that you know that is okay to say that is appropriate then be sensitive to that and um, and 
and be looking for those opportunities where God might allow you to play a part in his plan. And what a privilege, especially with our students. That's just, that's just awesome. So I hope these thoughts have been a little bit helpful. Um, like I said, these things come up all the time and I just wanted to get on and share some of those thoughts and feel free. I, I would love to hear your response in the comments. Uh, do you feel like I was off on anything? Do I need to clarify anything? Um, love to hear your thoughts and we can continue the conversation there and um, just praying for you today let, let me actually take a second let's close in prayer and um, just for you and for all of us that will seek God in these things father thank you so much for each teacher and just that they're even taking the time to listen to this I pray that you will give them strength in this crazy month of May and I pray that you will give us all wisdom help us to know your truth us to know the Bible, to know, um, just to know your truth and to remember your truth and just to reject the wrong thinkings that are around us and just try to overcome us. And I pray that you will keep us in your truth, that you will guide our words and our actions and our deeds, that we will bring glory to you. And that if in your plan, you choose to use us to reach into others' hearts, I pray that you will just give us wisdom and that you will make it clear uh, what you would have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, and have a great day, and enjoy your weekend.